Hi guys and welcome back to Watch Gauge. My name is John Keel. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Instead of talking about the brands that we carry and the cool watches we're selling and things like that and what limited editions we're working on, I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Um, what many people don't know is I contribute to Quill and Pad, uh, which, which is one of the great watch blogs out there. I don't get to write often for them because I am so busy with, uh, with Watch Gauge and, and other things I have going on. But that said, um, I had published a, a post a little while back on my my thoughts, my ideas of the top five ugliest watches on the planet. Now, um, you know, I, I, I ticked a lot of people off, I think. I, I, I hit a couple of nerves, but look, this was all in fun, and I think uh, today I thought it'd be a lot of fun to kind of do a video version of that, not picking out the ugliest watches in the world, but ones that I think are, are pretty darn ugly. Um, before we get into that, let's let's do uh, a little check of the wrist here. I'm wearing the Elliott Brown Canford um, with the silver dial, blue markings. I uh, love this watch. It's a it's a great piece. It's, it's one that I wear uh, banging around quite a bit. It's got a quartz movement in it. It's got a shock absorption system, but I said I wasn't gonna talk about our watches. So, let's get into it. Uh, I see ugly watches. In your dreams? While you're awake? How often do you see them? You know, I, I, there's no criteria here. I just did a bit of research, typing in uh, to Google, ugly watches, ugliest watches, hideous watches, things like that, and some fun stuff came up. There's a lot of cool threads like this in the message boards and in the forums. Um, but let's kick it off. The first, the first ugly watch that I saw that really made me just kind of squint um, is is the Monta Grappa Chaos. I mean, this watch is absolutely hideous. It's uh, what do I say? It's got snakes and it's got skulls. It's it's just foul. Um, and anyway, uh, the next one that I that I saw, and and I didn't even realize it was a watch. Take a look at it here. This is a watch by a company I've never even heard of. And I'm gonna glance down here at my notes. It's uh, it's Greco Geneve. And uh, no offense, Mr. Greco or whoever's behind the brand. But basically what they did was they took a piece of an asteroid. It's, it's the, the name of the watch is the asteroid. But they took a piece of a meteorite and they looked like they milled it out and just stuck a movement in there somehow. Um, but it, it's far from attractive for sure. Um, and you know, look, if, if you own it, if you wear it, I don't mean to offend you. Uh, but this is all good fun. I stumbled upon a watch that when I was doing the research uh, originally on on ugly watches, probably about two years ago when I wrote the article. Um, and one that came across was one from the 80s, and it looks like it's from the 80s, which is this guy here. This is the uh, the Corum Rolls Royce watch. Um, it just screams gaudy, and and it's meant to mimic the the grill of a Rolls Royce car. And uh, you know, I'm a big fan of of Ali G and uh, the movie The Dictator and everything that Sasha Baron Cohen does. So this watch instantly reminded me of Ali G. Now next up is a brand I. You know, it gets a lot of flack, but I happen to like a collection of their watches. I happen to be a big fan, because I'm an 80s kid, I happen to be a big fan of, of Romain Jerome's um, classic arcade watches with, with, they have the Donkey Kong, they have uh, Pac-Man, they have Space Invaders, I believe they have Asteroids, and if you're, if you're close to my age, you know, and, and you grew up in the 80s playing these classic games, uh, I happen to like these watches. One watch that they made, though, I really think missed the mark uh, as far as attractiveness goes, and it's this Batman watch they did. Um, it, I guess it's a cool design, it's a cool movement, but you know, if you can imagine this thing on somebody's wrist, I just don't think that uh, <laughs> that somebody would look and say, "Well, that's a good-looking watch." I just don't see it. Um, but hey, again, to each their own. So nothing screams, I've got a gambling problem, as much as having a roulette wheel on your wrist. Now there have been a handful of brands over the years that have done a, a gambling or a roulette theme style watch. Uh, Frank Mueller did one, um, Corum did a bubble version, um, who else? 
Um, Oh, the one, one I happen to like actually is Christophe Claret's uh, poker watch. This roulette wheel is on the back of the case. But to make the ugly watch list is the roulette wheel by Asmuth. Um, I, I believe I'm pronouncing that brand correctly. They make some outrageous watches. They make the Mr. Roboto and a bunch of other watches that I just, to me, just don't, don't scream attractive or good looking watches but this roulette wheel right here is a solid square hunk of metal a rectangular hunk of metal it's got an enormous uh, cube crown which is supposed to mimic the dice in any case I think this one really uh, was a shoe in for the list of, of ugliest watches out there the next one up on the list is the Krieger skeleton skeleton I think that's what they call it um, this watch, I don't know why, this watch just, I think it's not even so much as how ugly the watch is, but the advertising campaign and the marketing behind it. I mean, if you look at the watch, it's got a skeleton movement that to me isn't really finely finished at all. And then to put this skeleton in the face, that actually looks like, to me, it looks like sloth from uh, the Goonies um, once he removed all of his skin and everything else. Um, so I, I just think this is a fugly watch and I also think that the advertising campaign, you know, too, too goth for me, too, I don't know, too dark, whatever it may be, it just does not, uh, it, it screams ugly to me. It just screams ugly. So, uh, so Krieger, you made the list. The next watch is is from a brand called DeWitt. Uh, now DeWitt used to make some really outrageous, over the top, funky, crazy stuff. Since then, their brand has really subdued their watches. They've come back down to size, a little more classic in design. But the one watch from DeWitt that made the list, uh, and there might have been a few that could have, uh, but one of them was called the WX. Uh, concept. Now the WX concept is just a big rectangle hunk with this protruding uh, semicircle thing off the side. To me, I saw a picture uh, here. It's on somebody's wrist. It looks like uh, it looks like you could have a, a gun in it, like a maybe like a spy agency thing, you know, shoot people out of your wrist or whatever it may be, but as a timepiece, as something you throw on your wrist and wear to dinner or out with the uh, with the friends and family. It just does, it does not scream anything other than, what? What were you thinking? Um, but hey, look, again, here's what it is. Now, in full disclosure, I happen to be uh, a fan of a brand that's very polarizing. Everybody either really likes Hublot or really doesn't like Hublot. I happen to really be a fan of a lot of their Big Bang models, um, a handful of limited editions they came out with, and God knows they've came, come out with many of them. Um, but I just happen to like the sportiness of them. To me, they're a little too big, but I, I like the brand. However, they have a collaboration with Ferrari and they created this thing called the La Ferrari. Um, the La Ferrari watch by Hublot. As a, as a horological you know, machine, it's pretty awesome. But as something that's attractive to put on the wrist, particularly when you throw in a bunch of diamonds and baguettes and things like that, absolutely hideous. Um, you know, you missed it on this one, you blow. Uh, I I really appreciate the uh, the effort and love the love the machinery and the the mechanics behind it. But but it is just not a good looking watch whatsoever. Now this this next watch is what I perhaps think is one of the ugliest watches ever made, uh, and it was custom commissioned uh, by a gentleman everybody's heard of, uh, Kanye West. Now, I'm not a fan of Kanye. I think he's arrogant. I, I just, I don't like the dude. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack from, from Kanye fans out there for that one. However, um, he had this monstrosity commissioned for himself at a price tag, I believe, somewhere north of $180,000 with black and white diamonds to depict the likeness of Kanye, and I think brown diamonds too, whatever it may be, chocolate diamonds. But this thing is hideous. First of all, it's just ugly as a creation. But second of all, to put your mug on the face of a watch, how much do you have to love yourself? I mean, it's just absurd. It's absolutely absurd. And that this watch was actually in my original post on Quill and Pad. Now, 
And then today, just doing some research, I saw that a guy I actually, ha actually happen to like a lot and respect um, is uh, Usher. Uh, he's a phenomenal artist, phenomenal singer. Uh, from what I understand, I don't research too much, from what I understand, he's a, he's a halfway decent all around dude, I may be wrong, but he had this monstrosity made of himself by another brand that I, I read online cost them north of one million dollars. Come on, guys, what are you thinking? I mean, seriously, what are you thinking? Uh, just awful, completely awful. Now this last section we're gonna talk about obviously can't be taken seriously whatsoever, but these are watches that have dictator's faces on the dial. We have one here with the face of Kim Jong-il, uh, the departed dear leader of North Korea on it. Um, awful. Uh, we have one with Joseph Stalin. Okay, um, I guess. And uh, now these these two next ones, I'm, I'm actually curious if they're real. Um, this one I believe, and I couldn't find any writing about it, but this one's by Chopard, and it's got the image of what I believe to be Muammar Gaddafi's face. Um, and this is by Chopard. Is this real? If somebody from Chopard can tell me if this is real or not. I just, I can't believe that Chopard would actually make something like this. This next one too looks a little bit fake, but I'm not sure. And this is by my good friends at Oris. Um, and this is an image of Saddam Hussein on an Oris watch. I, okay, go figure. Now, there is one dictator watch uh, that I can get behind. And as I mentioned before, I'm a fan of Sasha Baron Cohen. Uh, so, Here's the dictator. Uh, this is an appropriate dictator watch. So there we are, guys. I just figured today we have a little bit of fun. I know that, you know, based on the Quill and Pad post that we did, that I did with a similar theme, I got, I got a lot of hate comments on that. Look. This is all in good fun. It's not taking anybody seriously. If you design these watches, if you make these watches, if you sell these watches, or if you own these watches, my most sincere apologies. Um, I also know that a lot of you guys probably have a lot of other great contenders for ugliest watches out there. Why don't you throw those, uh, those ugly watches in the comments below and uh, maybe we'll do a round two video of this if you guys enjoy it enough. Uh, don't forget to like, share, uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, a couple quick things. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Andreas and all the guys at the Divers Watches Facebook group. Uh, sent me this cool coffee mug I've been using every day during the holidays as well as some pens and some other swag. Uh, I'm a real proud supporter and sponsor of the Divers Watches Facebook group, among other Facebook groups out there that are fantastic. Um, don't forget to follow us, on, follow us on Instagram, on Twitter. Don't forget to like our Facebook page. Uh, again, like, share, comment, whatever it may be. And um, one last thing before I go, I am going to be doing a uh, an Ask Me Anything series. Now, um, just to, I, I get a ton of questions, whether it be via email, uh, chat box, um, Facebook, Instagram, all these things. I get questions from guys and, and, and watch people. And you know what? I love answering them. I love corresponding. And so I'll continue to do that. So keep the questions coming. However, I thought it might be fun to do a uh, an Ask Me Anything series here on Watch Gauge. Um, you know, just a little background. So you might have some reference of questions you might want to ask. I spent 18 years or 17 years working in the high end side of the industry. I launched Watch Gauge. Uh, which is focused on micro brands, um, you know. So I've, I've got you know some some experience and knowledge, as well as there are things I want to learn. So so throw some questions at me. The best way to do that is send an email to uh, watchgauge at gmail.com, which is the general uh, watchgauge email box. So send an email to uh, your question in, e in an email to watchgauge at gmail.com, and in the subject simply put AMA for Ask Me Anything, AMA, in the subject box. And as I accumulate questions, whatever they may be, um, I'll, I'll start doing a video series on on the Ask Me Anything series uh, based on the questions you guys send it. So uh, so feel free to do that. Send an email to watchgauge at gmail.com in the subject line AMA and ask away. Uh, that, I think it's gonna be a fun uh, series. May not. If it if it works, I'll, I'll keep pumping them out. If not, then we'll let it go away. So uh, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Um, looking forward to he you know hearing your suggestions of what watches are ugly out there. And uh, and please 
take this in good stride. It's all in good fun. No hate mail. And, uh, and we'll talk to you real soon. Cheers.